So my node process is on fire, yes. Um, th this talk is about what to do when your node application is, is not behaving, okay? Um, I'm not talking about literally burning IoT devices. No, I've done that. Doing that, I'm not doing that anymore, Steve. Um, so uh, I don't know how many of you, how many, how much, I don't know how many times happened to all of you to be woken up by an alarm on Sunday morning because your, the application you spent so much time developing was not behaving correctly and users were disappointed. So, well, it happened to me several times, in fact. Um, so what do you do? Well, typically you log in into the, your cloud servers, cloud provider accounts, whatever, look at what's going on, and you know, you have a bunch number, maximum number of servers in your auto-scaling group, which you should use all the time, and uh, the application is still not behaving, so you log in, you SSH in the box, I don't know, you tweak some stuff, and after a while, uh, everything gets back to normal, and you did a hot fix, as, as we call it. Now, um, this type of performance problem are, are very important to solve and to prevent. So whenever you have a, you have a performance issue or a production issue, you should really do run a post-mortem. So after the morning, on Monday morning, you come back to work and you, you check, oh, well, what happened, okay? And this is the question you should ask, what happened? Um, but more importantly, you should check, you should ask yourself how to fix this. So this, the road to fix things in production is, first of all, gather diagnostics, data, and evidence. So again, if you have set up some, some logging infrastructure, some uh, monitoring, CloudWatch, one of those, whatever you want to use, a uh, lot of services in the APM area, and with this diagnostic, you need to be able to reproduce the problem in a um, non-production live environment. So you can reproduce the problem, yes. And after you can reproduce it, it's still on a cloud environment. And after you're able to do that, then you can try and reproducing the problem on, on your box. Now, reproducing the problem on your box is important because it means it's very easy then to work on this stuff. Um, on there, you gather some more diagnostic and evidence. The type of diagnostics and evidence you can gather from your box are way more detailed than what you can get on the cloud uh, because you're not limited by the overhead of, 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 of the tools you want to use. So then you try to fix the problem several times, several times, several times. And you, if it's not fixed, you go back um, and you try again and run more diagnostics, fix it, whatever. So how do we fix things? Um, the, mo the most important bit is establishing a measurable goal, and I will get back to this later on. Um, and then um, you measure, so how you get good measurements. And then we find what we call the bottleneck, which is what is slowing down your application. And then we fix the bottleneck. We remove that bottleneck, and ideally that will show another bottleneck, and, and so on. And we measure again, and if it's not fixed, uh, we go back and uh, find a new bottleneck, optimize, measure, all over again, up until our measurable goal is solved. Now, how do we establish a measurable goal? Well, typically, you can talk to your boss and get something like this from him, uh, whatever this means, uh, what, something that's valuable for your application, okay? How, how many concurrent users per service you want to achieve, you want to reach, what's the maximum latency you need to, to have, uh, those are very important numbers. Whatever it is, this is very generic things that you can pay, take, take and, and use it, okay? But every application has its own business requirements. Um, when developing Node.js application, you need to remember that latency and throughput are connected to each other. And uh, because Node is single-threaded. However, um, and this means that multiple IO actions run in parallel, but one single uh, JavaScript uh, function it can execute. Um, and when multiple I.O. are in parallel, like for example, multiple database connections, um, you know, you have an increased concurrency. And if the um, latency uh, of those I.O. action gets higher because you might have a database problem, for example, uh, you have, in you typically, the concurrency increases. But that when that happens, uh, uh, memory usage spikes. And when memory usage spikes, uh, this increases the garbage collection activity. So when all of these are connected, it means that the garbage collection activity impacts your CPU cycles and the execution of your JavaScript functions. 
So all of these things are all interconnected to each other by the limited resources that your CPU has, your, your process has. Um, so uh, in order to establish a good measure, we can use this tool called AutoCannon. It's an HTTP load tester, runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux, very trivial installation. You don't have to compile anything, it just comes out. It, you have, it will compile something, but we're getting rid of that, ideally, sooner rather than later. Um, how do you use it? You start your node server, then you start out a canon specifying the number of connections, the duration, some other parameters, and it gets you some statistics, including the latency. So how do we find the bottleneck? Well, you need to gather some more diagnostics. Now we have, a we have measured, we know our established goal, we can compute a, a, a gap between the two, and we need to gather some more, some more diagnostics. We can use this new tool that we have just released called Node Clinic. You can npm install clinic if you want to. Um, and uh, what you did, this tool has two commands inside. One is called doctor and one is called flame, and I will show them in a moment. The first one is doctor. It's a nice logo. I don't know if you like it, but I hope so. A friendly doctor. And uh, you can literally type uh, clinic doctor node server. This installs a bunch of things, probes in your, your node server sub into your server and it can generate some, some useful statistics out of it. Let's do that. So here it is. Whoop. This went up. Can you, hope you I, hopefully you can see this? OK. So what you do, you do clinic um, doctor, dash dash no demo. This is my demo code. So as you see, it's spinning up the, um, it's, it's, using, it's using trace events to gather, uh, to gather some most advanced statistics. This is still an experimental feature in Node 8. Um, so we run the stuff, and after it's run, we hit control C on the server, and it generates this type of diagram. So in this diagram, it can tell you some, some very nice things. For example, it can tell you that we have detected a potential event loop issue. And how we can do that? Well, you can see here that you can, that this process, the event loop delay keeps growing, okay, up to almost three seconds. Well, it's buggy, okay, it's a demo of some code you should never write. Um, and we can also track memory usage. But the, the very nice thing about this tool is it has a recommendation panel, which it tells you what to do when you have this type of issues. So in this thing, you can, for example, implement HTTP 503 event loop protection. It's a very important thing you should have in your application. But you can also recommend you to use a tool called Clinic Flame to discover the CPU intensive uh, functions. And there's a lot of explanation of all of this, so step to follow. We also have browse, uh, other undetected issues, so you can also read the guide, for example, on how to solve I.O. problems or garbage collection problems, which are not memory leaks, are more problems where the garbage collection is interacting with your application in a not so nice way. So um, this is it. This was my fallback. Then the other tool is called Clinic Flame. And this is based on another thing called ZeroX. It's using it internally that we've developed before. And uh, how do you use it? Again, similar pattern, clinic flame dash dash node server. So um, what we do is we run it this way, clinic flame dash dash node demo. And this requires the, your root password because it needs to use some low level, um, uh, it needs to, to use some low level uh, diagnostic tools called uh, Dtrace on Mac and Prof on Linux, okay? Now we have run this, then we hit Control C. And all of this is crunching stuff, of course, takes some time. Uh, all of these arguments are very complicated. Now, let me zoom in because, of course, what you can see, it generates this type of diagram where there's a very odd function called sleep. Now, I hope all of you guess what the, the type of code that I have written for this demo, which is very simple, which is this thing. It has a sleep function that just actively wait for something to happen. Very trivial, okay? You should never write this type of function in your code base, okay? Uh, but you can detect some very complicated code in there as well, for example. So um, uh, I want to go through, I want to just say that uh, uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'm doing a, a performance workshop uh, with my colleague Josh. And uh, um, uh, in which you will get lost in the rabbit hole of uh, performance. So in this, uh, uh, in this workshop, we will go through how to diagnose a performance problem using Clinic, but also using other things. Uh, for example, how to use the node inspector and other stuff like that. Um, we will also use flame graphs to know where is the problem. Okay, As I showed there, there was, that was very simple and trivial. 
but uh, the, the prob what, we will see to what we'll see tomorrow is way more complicated and way more deep. Um, and then we will dig deep into V8 flags to understand what is happening. Um, if you go into, uh, we, have, we have been talked with Flacky before that there is a thing called inlining, okay? And uh, we will dig deep into the whole optimization cycle and the optimization and the optimization cycle of V8 and uh, turbofan. And, and we, what we'll use to do this is a slow, is a slow REST API. So a slow, um, what we mean is I provide you a nice application and you can do that. Um, uh, you should, um, so this whole talk was about performance optimization, but I want to spend 30 seconds saying that you don't need to over-optimize your code. So the important part about optimizing Node.js applications is only about um, doing this when it's needed, okay, and, uh, and to meet your business goals. So over-optimizing the code is most, most of the time not a good idea. Please uh, remember this and do not, do not fall in the trap, okay? Um, I want to thank uh, Nearform to help building this tool. Uh, it's open source, so you can download it now. There is a couple of blog, big blog posts coming out in, uh, uh, about this. I would also want to thank the team that helped building this tool, uh, Andreas, uh, Joy, Connor, uh, Matthias, Alan, and Camille. This presentation is available in a couple of places. This and this, it's, you can take a picture if you want. That's the best way to get this, this, this content. And uh, I am on time, so even a little bit early, but that's fine. Um, so um, this is me, hi. Uh, I am a principal architect at Nearform, and I'm also a member of the technical steering committee of, of Node.js, so I help uh, maintain the Node.js uh, runtime. So if you have any questions about Node.js, come and ask me, okay? I also write a lot of code, as you can see. Um, and thank you, folks.